Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this brand new gaming motherboard from MSI. This is the Z87G45. As the name of this motherboard implies, this does feature the new Z87 chipset from Intel. It also features the 1150 socket, so bear in mind this is designed for fourth generation Intel core processors, uh, not to be confused with third generation uh, Ivy Ridge or second generation Sandy Bridge. The fourth generation uh, is codenamed Haswell and uh, is a new socket, so it is not going to be backwards compatible with the Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor, so please bear that in mind. Uh, but you do get the Z87 chipset as well as support for those new processors, so if you're going to go for something like a 4770K or 4670K, you should be all set. This is, of course, part of the G series from MSI. They're continuing their performance line of gaming motherboards. And next I will just flip around to the back so we can take a look at some detailed specifications. Uh, so right here you can see them all listed out again, fourth gen Intel Core processors, LGA 1150 socket, Z87 Express chipset, you get PCI Express Gen 3 support, uh, you also get some integrated uh, video outs because the uh, Intel fourth generation processors do have built-in iGPUs just as their predecessor, predecessors did. Uh, you get four DIMMs, four PCI Express X1 slots. Uh, I'm going to go over all, all this stuff and get out of the box. I would like to point out you get RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10 available on the uh, integrated Z87 controlled uh, PCH. And uh, those are all SATA Rev 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. So that's pretty awesome. Some other specs uh, listed out in here, some detailed features, of course. We get audio boost technology. So this is uh, pretty much uh, going to give you golden audio jacks headphone amplifier built in, uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetic shielding, as well as high quality audio capacitors for improved audio performance. You get a killer E2200 network interface card that's integrated onto the board. That's going to let you prioritize your gaming traffic over your other traffic. So if you're playing a game, you will not have uh, notice noticeably less lag. Also over on the right, you see the uh, OC Genie 4. Uh, they're continuing the OC Genie line. It's one clock, one click. Uh, overclocking or one one button push overclocking uh, that will automatically overclock your system for uh, enhanced performance. Uh, we also have some other features such as multi-GPU uh, capabilities. You can actually do two-way uh, SLI or Crossfire X setups on this. Uh, if you happen to be uh, rocking some dual GPU cards, you can also do quad uh, SLI or quad Crossfire X. Uh, you also get Sound Blaster Cinema, so that's for more realistic surround sound when you're playing back movies or games. The military Class 4 components. Uh, again, MSI is using high quality components here for a longer lifespan. And then finally, you get the uh, special ports for gaming devices. So you actually get a legacy PS2 port. So if you're still rocking a keyboard that uh, might have N key rollover support, for example, as well as some actual dedicated USB 2.0 ports. Uh, which can often give you better compatibility right out of the box if you're uh, using a gaming keyboard, for example. Inside the retail box, we have the motherboard of so itself, of course, which we will finish on. We also get some add-ons and accessories. Hey, little uh, door tag right there. It just says, I'm not here. Use that if you're gaming or I'm sorry, busy gaming. Oh, look, you got two options. You can trick people or you can tell people what you're actually doing. Uh, you also have a couple serial ATA uh, cables right here. So these are going to be compatible with SATA re uh, revision 1, 2, or 3. So if you got an SSD, of course, will work just fine. You get a couple with uh, 90 degree L brackets on one end. Uh, actually, both of them have 90 degree L brackets on one end and a straight plug on the other end. You also have your input output shield right here. So it is primarily black with some red text indicating what ports are what. You also get a fairly substantial case badge right there. MSI G-Series gaming case badge. You get a driver and utility disk right there. So um, chances are, if you go to the MSI website, you're going to be able to download updated versions of those drivers, which is always a better bet than going with the drivers included on the disk. But you can use that to get your LAN uh, port set up right off the bat, for example. This is a quick installation guide, a more generic guide for those folks who might not be familiar with installing a motherboard. You can also try our How to Build a Computer video on Newegg TV. Finally, you get your actual MSI Gaming User's Guide for the G45, and that's going to give you more detailed information specific to this motherboard, uh, such as the actual included parts. This is a different layout than I've seen in, in, uh, in, uh, <laughs> in guides in the past. So motherboard specs, for example, with all of the included hardware. Next up, let's take a look at the motherboard.
So here's the Z87 G45, and as you can tell, MSI has gone with a primarily black and red color scheme for this motherboard. Uh, you can see a look from the front there. Let me also flip around to the back really quick so you can get a look at the PCB. Uh, it is a dark brown slash black PCB. Uh, you'll notice, of course, the uh, LGA backplate right there. You also might notice that all of the uh, heat sinks on the board are connected with Phillips head screws. So if you ever do need to remove those, that makes it a bit simpler to remove and replace them. Uh, also here we'll take a closer look at the layout of the fan connectors on the board. You get a total of five. They're all four pin PWM capable fan connectors. So if starting off at the top up here, CPU fan one and CPU fan two. And then you also have three system fan headers. One of them is located right here above the PCI Express. Uh, one of them is located down here at the bottom middle or just slightly off to the left. And then finally one more right up here by your 24 pin main motherboard power connector. Now we're going to go over the board in extreme detail. I'm going to start in the bottom right, just below the uh, MSI heat sink that you can see for the Z87 chipset. Uh, so first off, on the lower bottom right, you have three USB 2.0 ports uh, connectors. So each of those can handle two uh, front panel or rear panel USB 2.0 uh, ports, of course. All of the USB on this board, I should mention, is controlled by the Z87 chipset. So you're going to get native, native support for that, which is going to give you uh, among the fastest USB 2 and USB 3.0 times available. Uh, to the left of that, you'll notice your front panel headers. I'm actually using my pen to point. So front panel 1, front panel 2, located right there. Also a trusted platform module header if you're interested in one of those. There's that system fan header I already mentioned. You get a comm header and you get an audio front panel connector. So that's for uh, HD audio or AC97. To the left of that, you'll notice your audio boost componentry right there. So there's your electromagnetic shield over your uh, your Realtek audio chip in just a moment. It is the ALC 1150 codec uh, supported chip right there. So there's your audio technology built in. And then above and to the right of that, you will notice your PCI Express configura configuration. Uh, so you, you get quite a few X1 ports, uh, one, two, three, and four of those total. Then you also get your full length X16 ports right there. They're wired up for a variety of configurations. So if you're just gonna be rocking a single card in your top port there, this will run at X16 and it will disable the lower two. Uh, if you're running the top port and your uh, third slot right there, you'll be running at X8, X8, and X0. And then finally, if you uh, do populate all three of those, you'll be running at X8, X4, and X4. So bear in mind, if you're going to be going uh, with an SLI configuration, at least you need X8 for both. So for that, you're going to need to use these two. And you do get triple slot spacing between those, so that will give you a bit of extra space between your video cards, uh, as long as you're using two slot cards, of course. That will give you a bit of extra airflow over the fans and whatnot. Uh, while I'm right here, I might as well also point out you get an mSATA slot that's right above that. So if you have a small uh, mSATA SSD, uh, you can pop it in right there, and uh, that will simply take precedence over uh, one of the ports that's over on the lower right, which we're about to move on to. So here are your serial ATA connectors, and uh, one of the awesome things about the Z87 chipset, all of these are now SATA revision 3. That's 6 gigabits per second. Uh, so if you have multiple SSDs, for example, you're going to be able to run them all at full speed. And again, also natively controlled by the Z87 chipset. So uh, that's going to give you lower latency as compared to, say, add-on chips that might be used to add uh, serial ATA ports. Also, this sticker right there on top. And again, that's just indicating that your SATA port 6 will be disabled if you do use that little M SATA slot for an add-on MSATA SSD. Actually, another good point about that MSATA uh, slot, which is right over here, is that that is also going to be running at uh, SATA revision 3 speeds. So um, really cool, because uh, that's been hard to find on a desktop board up till now. Moving along up the side of the board, oh wait, I also need to point out right here, USB 3.0, uh, that's a 20-pin USB 3.0 connector for your front panel USB 3. Again, natively controlled, and they've given you a nice 90-degree right angle on that to give you a bit easier time running your cable from the front of your case. All right, let's move along up the side of the board. So on the right over here, again, that uh, four-pin system fan header. Uh, you also have some voltage read points right above that. Uh, you've got a 24-pin uh, main motherboard power connector right there. And then above that, you can see some more componentry, of course. To the left, actually, I should say, you have your DDR3. Uh, so if you're familiar with the DDR3 uh, dual-channel configuration that we had with Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge, it is essentially the same, although you do have uh, the uh, controller, of course, which is integrated into your processor. You get four 
uh, DDR3 slots right there. It's dual channel, so you're going to want to uh, buy your, your sticks in sets of two, or of course you can buy a four stick set if you want to populate all four slots. Uh, it is compatible with memory capacities of up to 32 gigs total. So that will actually give you uh, 8 gigs per DIMM slot, and it supports overclock speeds. Actually, Intel's official rated speeds go up to 1600, but you can overclock uh, do speeds all the way up to 3000 if you can find your way to, to get your hands on a, on a DDR3 3000 kit, which is pretty rare these days. But uh, even that said, you can go up pretty far. Okay, to the left of that, you will notice your LGA socket. And this is LGA 1150. Again, not backwards compatible with 1155, so please bear that in mind. It's got the socket cover on it right now. If you do happen to purchase this board after you pop off that cover, hang on to it because that's really important to keep if you ever need to disassemble your computer in the future. You also notice since this is a gaming motherboard and it is de designed for overclocker overclocking, uh, you have your military class 4 componentry. So for instance, you can see some super, super ferrite chokes under, under there for your uh, CPU phases, delivering power to the CPU and the memory and the iGPU. Also, you have some quite striking looking uh, heat sinks on there. Actually, if I tilt this to the side, you might notice it's actually shaped like the dragon that's on the outside of the box. That's kind of cool. Uh, and then, of course, next to your heat sinks, you have your 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector. Make sure you connect that because uh, chances are you will have a hard time booting up and especially a hard time overclocking without that plugged in. Finally, we have inputs and outputs over here on the side. Uh, so again, we have a legacy PS2 port right there. Mouse or keyboard can be used with that. But that's going to give you um, some backwards compatibility, especially, if, again, if you have the uh, NN key rollover gaming keyboard. Really great to have that. I also like the inclusion of some uh, USB 2.0 ports right there for plugging in, say, mouse and keyboard right off the bat. Often that gives you a bit better compatibility if you're trying to enter the BIOS, or I should say UEFI. Uh, you also have some audio right here. So you have an optical toss link uh, out right there, as well as a coaxial. Uh, audio out. You have some covers right here on some of your video outs. So you do have a 15-pin D-sub right there for an analog uh, VGA out. You also have a digital output right there by way of a dual-link DVI connector. Bear in mind, not analog there, so don't try to use an adapter on here. Just plug in the VGA if you're using a uh, VGA connection. There also is your uh, killer 2200 network interface card connection uh, for your RJ45 cable. And then uh, two and four, I should say, four more USB 3.0 ports right there. Uh, again, those are all natively controlled by the chipset, so you're going to get really good performance out of them. Uh, we have another cover right here on an HDMI out. So again, all of these display outputs you see right here are going to be for the uh, iGPU in your Haswell processor. Um, so if you are not running a video card, or if you want to set up Quick Sync or something like that, you can use these video outs and you can use Lucid to sort of uh, manage the difference between those if you are going to go with uh, both the integrated graphics as well as an add-on card. Finally, you have your analog connectors right there for your integrated audio. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the new MSI Z87 G45 gaming motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's new fourth generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you all in the next video.